Morning, Trainiacs. Today's the day that this becomes obsolete. The Canyon Speedmax just got updated, and I tell you, the new model, it's game-changing stuff. Seriously, like, actually, there's some good stuff. So I still have this older model of the Canyon Speed Max, but what I've arranged is a pro triathlete Sarah Crowley has one of just a few dozen fully done up new models of the Canyon Speed Max. So we're gonna do a call with her that you're gonna be in on, and we're gonna walk through, not like promo advertising all put together video wise of like sexy scissor reel. We're just gonna walk through the features of the bike. I walked through it online with the people at Canyon last week and it's pretty impressive. I think that there are certainly some things that whether you're in the market for that $15,000 super bike or you're just wondering what's going to happen to the bike industry in the next few years and what you can expect to be waiting for from Canyon or from your favorite bike supplier, you're gonna see, because I think that this is gonna set the tone for a lot of the bike industry. For a lot of Canyon lovers out there, it's new bike day. So if you are unaware, Sarah Crowley is a professional long course athlete. She's been on the podium at Kona two times, three times? Two times. What is happening? Show off this schnazzy new bike here. So why don't we just start with like, okay, what is your most favorite new feature? Cause it's essentially, it's an entirely new bike. Well, I've been lucky enough to have this for a few weeks. Um, and so even though we weren't supposed to take it out for a ride yesterday, I may have done that the day before the launch. And what I found was the best bit actually is the fact that it handles crosswinds like super well. So um, obviously now we don't have the front bottle here in this section and there's a lot less up here and stuff. So I actually just off of the bat. And also I think now the aerodynamics, the way it works is that it's, it's actually better to have um, wider rims. So like 28 mil rear and 25 mil front. So um, it just feels a lot more stable, which I'm looking forward to in Hawaii. Um, I've certainly noticed, I mean, as a smaller person, I've noticed I get blown around a lot. Um, definitely super rigid as well. So that's the only, I mean, that's like on the ground grasp, first touch experience with the bike. Yeah, whereas now we get this cool hydration system that's inside the frame, um, which is like, the, the use of space on this bike is like astonishing. When I pulled it out, I was like, wow, like you kept finding new compartments, which, you know, the older Speedmax CFS LX with the, you know, the toolbox here, but now we have a toolbox in the, the bottom bracket. And then also this, this flap here is like amazing. So it's just the design and the way it's uh, created, I think is just incredible. The use of space yet still maintaining that rigid frame without losing any, anything, um, can't say, I don't think it'd be UCI legal, but I don't know. Can you show me how the bladder goes in and out? The hydration of the frame? bladder? How to get it out of the frame? Yeah. I can't, Darren, I don't know. <laughs> so, so while you're figuring it out with the manual, I'm just gonna have a play, because mostly Canyon stuff is very intuitive. And, oh, there's like a button. Oh, there it is. And so this lifts up. I guess you must have to feed the straw through. It comes through here, so it lifts out. And the bladder's there. So I guess I must have to feed a bit more straw, but I'd have to pull the straw out, but ba oh yeah, it comes into, ah, oh, voila. The bladder, simples. Dale could go in and show us how, it f how like all the flaps of all the storage. Can you show me? All of those, because that's pretty unique how it's not, yeah, how it's rigid, it's magnetic. That's super cool. Super cool. Yeah. And then this is where you fill the water into here. And then this is like where you drink it. This bit here is obviously like, you know, I think you can get ones for Wahoo and ones for Garmin. Um, but yeah, and then I guess down the bottom, 
at the back, we'll flip it around. This section here comes off and it's got all the tools like within the, within the frame, which is pretty awesome. So I guess here, I mean, I like this. It's so easy to open, right? You're like riding and then so many things fit in there. This bit, so basically with the setup, you have a base plate here, which is, there's like small, medium, large. And then from there, you put on the stack that you want. So the frame size matters a lot because it, it determines that base level. But then you choose angled risers, whatever. Um, and that is just one piece for the whole front section. And then this slides like a sheath in and out. It can be um, obviously further away. And these actually adjust the angle of the hands. And then these move outwards and inwards as well. Tell me more about how it feels when you're riding it compared to the original Speed Max. Um, it's different, obviously it has disc brakes, that's another thing. So we're seeing, um, as you can see there, it has disc brakes on it. So um, yeah, like I feel like it's more rigid. Like I think I said that before, it's definitely less twitchy. So it feels um, easier, I don't know. But from just taking it out here in Salt Lake where it's quite windy, there's a lot of crosswinds, it feels way less twitchy than my other bike, um, than the Speedmax CFS LX. And yeah, it's also just, it seems stiffer and softer as well. Like I had hit over, you know, it's stiff in terms of responsiveness, but softer because we're running like wider tires. So the 28 mil um, rear tire just sort of, just rolls over stuff. And apparently the 28 mil width tire is more aerodynamic on the back. Um, yeah, so it has a lot more stability. Um, have you had to adjust anything or has it been set up for you? Basically, I'm wondering how is it to work on if you've had to work on anything? Oh, it comes with it. Oh yeah, okay. So one thing which I'm excited about is that it comes with, well, I'm not sure if it comes with or we, would, we got it with, but I got it with its, own, its very own bike bag. All you do is take the wheels off and undo the derailleur. It's all padded out in there. There's like poles and everything. It's got four wheels. It's awesome. So yeah, so this is, this is it, Taryn, the 2020 new Canyon Speedmax CFR um, in the flesh. Um, I look forward to seeing you on one. We can go for a ride one time, but yeah, definitely some major advancements on the previous model. And yeah, I can't wait to just hit up a, a velodrome or a track and you might see it at Daytona. I'm going to start training for that ride right now because I don't want to be left on the side of the road. <laughs> You might be, this probably has an SOS like beacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I'll put on find my phone just in case you drop me. Wee, that's a good looking bike. Okay, let me go explain how I think that is going to change not just this bike, but all bikes that you should be looking at over the next, say four or five years. All right, so here's what I think is going to happen as a result of this bike. Number one, we know that disc brakes are coming in. It's coming into all tri bikes. So here's the thing about disc brakes. It's an aero advantage, which is the most important thing when it comes to a tri bike. It is a weight disadvantage. Disc brakes are a little bit heavier, but we don't really worry about that a whole lot on tri bikes because we strap an additional three pounds of food on a bike anyway. And it's a mechanical disadvantage. They're harder to work on in triathletes. We aren't really great bike mechanics. So that's an easy thing to know. But the bigger thing to know is that all bikes are going towards having more integration. We look at the current Canyon Speedmax and we see that there's a bento box here. We see that here we've got, we've got an area for all of our flat repair kits, but it's a little bit clumsy. It's something that can fall off. And that's what the engineers that released this and talked to me about, they said that you had at like 40K per hour, you had all these little plastic things to worry about. You had this hard rubber bento box that you kind of had your fingers stuck in or just uncomfortableness. You had this really big wind sail of a hydration. Now this is obviously far, far better than slapping a bunch of bottles all over your bike, but it can be made better. And I think that's what Canyon's doing. 
what they're doing is instead of this flap, it's now an integrated flap that has a firm hinge, a mechanical closure, so it's not gonna flop around, it's not gonna get lost. The hydration is now using up the space in the down tube. The bento box area is again, using the space in the top tube with that integrated hinged mechanical flap. So all of that is all of a sudden becoming just a little bit more user friendly. It's just an iteration of the trend that we're already seeing. The next thing, and I think this is the more interesting thing about the bike, is the front end. I talked about doing it on this bike, I did it on my last bike, Sarah Crowley did it on her last bike, just about everyone looking to get really comfortable in the aero position has historically put on their own arm cups, their own extensions. And as an engineer looking at that, I can only imagine that Canyon engineers are looking at it thinking that somebody has completely tore apart their bike and it's not being used in the way that it was intended. So all of their wind tunnel tests are all of a sudden not really relevant. With Canyon now going towards a kit that comes to you with the bike that you can customize your risers, your angle, your reach. There's now an option to have not just the arm cups that come with the bike, you can have an entire forearm platform. You can have a larger arm cup and then a second arm cup for your forearm. You can now angle up the bars. You can telescope them in and out. You can angle them up and down. So all of these things are allowing Canyon to sell you a bike that doesn't need to be adjusted. Actually, it can be adjusted. It's going to be adjusted a lot. It's not going to be Frankenstein with aftermarket parts. And it's small little changes, but I think that there are enough changes that we're going to start seeing the industry going in that way. And being a new Canyon person, I'm pumped up that Canyon is kind of blazing some trails with some of these things that are new or just slicker iterations of things that are already out there. It's kind of cool. Now, if you're wondering where you can get this bike, Canyon in the world is available, I think, pretty much right away in North America. It's gonna be around January is what they've said. If you're in Canada, what they've told me is they wanna make sure that they have stock of everything. Every last part, the logistics all set up by spring. That means I gotta wait a little bit too. So thanks to Crowley for again taking part in our podcast and our YouTube channel. She's been a big pro supporter of the channel since uh, we've been around like years ago. And uh, if you wanna go check out the sizzle reel of her video releasing that on the salt flats, you can go check that out right over here. And make sure that you're subscribed to her channel and our channel, so hit the subscribe button below if you aren't already. Later, Trainiacs.